Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Tribune Sports Live. He's Alan Taylor. I'm Zach Steele. Week one is in the books, and Alan, two and one's not bad. It's really not, and uh, it, we got some great uh, highlights for all three games, and it was it was really a good opening weekend. Uh, the Hewitt Huskies fall on a very close ball game. Clay Chalkville takes care of business up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and Pinson Valley gets a big win at home against a very good 6A team in Hartzell. Yeah, and of course, you know, both Clay Chalkville and Pinson look real good. Hewitt Trustful looked good. Hewitt Trustful played a very, very good football team out of Tennessee. Well, we'll be back with those Hewitt Husky highlights in just a moment. This is Tribune Sports Live. At Bryant Bank, we focus on you. You'll never have to worry about being just another number in the system. When you're a member of the Bryant Bank family, our Bryant Bankers will work to understand who you are, where you want to go, and how we can help you to get there. We're big believers in developing relationships with our customers, and we value friendships we make along the way. Bryant Bank provides unbeatable service and legendary results. Bryant Bank, member FDIC and equal housing lender. All right, we're back, and Alan, the Huskies lost a very tough ball game against uh, Montgomery Bell last Friday night, 21-16. Huskies were driving for the go-ahead score with less than a minute left when Zach Thomas throws the ball over the middle to Grayson Cash. He gets sandwiched in between two players. The ball pops up in the air, intercepted by a Montgomery Bell defender, uh, pretty much ending the ball game. But pretty good night for the Huskies. It, it really was. I, I think uh, a first good challenge for the Huskies – um, you know, sometimes you, you probably like to start with a weaker opponent. I don't know that the Huskies are going to have a weaker opponent. I mean, it's uh, every, every team they play on their schedule is, is going to be this good. And so uh, Montgomery Bell was just as advertised. They were a good, disciplined football team. Um, they, they've won a lot of championships up there. They came ready to play. But I, I think the Huskies uh, showed a lot of bright spots. And uh, I think the, uh, the, the offense – you know, struggled a little bit at times, but you know they played a very, very good defense. So, uh, but I think overall it was a it was a it was a good night for the Huskies. Teams were pretty evenly matched. Uh, the big difference in the game, of course, special teams, which is one of the things we talked about in the preseason show. Uh, Huskies had some question marks there, and you know maybe they still do going into week two. Yeah, they do. You know, uh, we said in in our pregame show, you know, in in this league that that the Huskies are in. Uh, special teams are going to be big. It's going to win some games for them. Uh, it can lose some games. And, and the special teams bit them. Um, you know, we had a block punt. We had a block field goal. And th those, were, those were key factors in the game. Those uh, plays change, and, you know, it might have been a different outcome. But that's something I think this coaching staff will get fixed and get corrected. Uh, we got to see Ty Chandler from Montgomery Bell, the top running back recruit in the country. Uh, he was just as good as advertised, but Jerry and Street had a good ball game as well. Jer Jerry and Street played so well. You know, he had uh, 143 yards rushing, uh, carried the ball 24 times. He was kind of the workhorse. Um, he, he looked great. Ty Chandler is, is a good good ball player, and I'm they're claiming next year he may be the best player in the country. Uh, but our defense uh, – they played him well at times. I mean, he had a couple of good runs, a couple of long runs, but uh, there was a there was a lot of times during the night that the Husky defense was able to stuff him, him up, and keep him uh, keep him in check. Uh, one of the things we wanted to see from last year to this year uh, with Zach Thomas was his improvement as a passer, and uh, it looked like we saw that. He 16 for 22 passing, 129 yards. Also ran the ball probably a little bit more than they would have liked for him to. Those weren't all designed runs. Right. But, uh, again, a good balance night for Zach. Well, I think Coach Floyd said uh, early on, you know, Zach Thomas has a good arm. He's a great athlete. He's a great leader. Uh, he, he wanted him to be able to throw the ball more. He did throw the ball. He threw it effectively. Uh, 16 for 22 is a good night, 129 yards. Um, he, he, threw, uh, he threw some safe passes and, and, and some – passes that were caught and turned into run. So he, he, he did a good job with that. He did probably run it more than they want him to, but I think that's the way this offense is designed. Uh, you know, the, 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 the passing, if it's not there, you're going to see Zach Thomas, I think, all season pull the ball down and run because he can do it. Uh, we also got to see uh, the younger McIlwain, Elliot McIlwain in the mix, uh, replacing Kyle Moore, who was a senior last year, did a great job for the Huskies at the H-back position, but Elliot stepped in and did a very good job. He sure did. And, you know, uh, the H-back position, it's not a heralded position that you, you know, you get a lot of headlines, 
But in this offense, in this style of offense, that H-back is really important. It, 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 they have to pick up protections on pass plays. Uh, they're involved in pass plays. They run the ball from time to time. It, it is key to uh, the success of this offense, and I think – Elliot McElwain stepped up big Friday night. Uh, the Husky defense looked a lot better uh, last Friday night uh, than they have last season. They, you know, last season you definitely saw they were missing some pieces. Uh, looked a lot better against uh, Montgomery Bell. Uh, gave up a couple of big pass plays, but the front seven looked very stout. They, they really did. And uh, again, Montgomery Bell averaged about 280 across the front. This was a big offensive line. And I thought the Huskies' uh, defense stacked up well against them. They played well, had a, had a great running back. Uh, the quarterback was solid for Montgomery Bell. And that front seven stepped up. Uh, great play out of the linebackers, I think, the front seven. And, and remember, too, we had, we had a, the Christian Smith, uh, the kid that transferred from Leeds that was All-State last year. He played sparingly in the game because he's, he's uh, had a little injury and he hadn't practiced. So he played sparingly. When he's back, uh, to, to join them really on a full-time basis. I think you're going to see that front seven look real, real good. So the Huskies are 0-1, but here's the good news. That game in the general scheme of things doesn't really matter. Um, it's not counted against your region or anything like that. So the Huskies uh, have a good opportunity as they travel up to take on a very good Gardendale team this week. Talk a little bit about them. Well, you know, you're right. Um, I, your coaches would probably have a hard time calling it a, a game that don't matter because, you know, it, and a player, you want to win them all. And I, I know that the Huskies are disappointed they didn't win that game. But it, it don't douse their playoff hopes at all, and, and uh, that's when they get into region play. Uh, going this week to play Gardendale. Gardendale didn't play last week. They had a jamboree game against Mortimer Jordan, beat them 49 to nothing. Uh, and, you know, talking to Coach Floyd this week, this is a good football team. They've got – uh, a couple of skill players, their quarterback, I think, their their running backs back from last year. You know, last year we got down 17 to nothing quickly against them and had to come back and fight back and win that game. So it's going to be tough to go up to Gardendale, first road game. Uh, you know, Friday night we had a great crowd, uh, kind of had the home field advantage a little bit, but we're going to go up to Gardendale um, and uh, it'll be a tough challenge. That game 7 o'clock on Friday night. Uh, when we return, we're going to talk about the Clay Chalkwell Cougars and how they went up to Murfreesboro, Tennessee and took care of business against Blackman. We'll be back. Trussell Vision Care is now proud to offer sports vision training for athletes. This sports-specific training improves hand-eye coordination and reaction time. As a former college athlete, Dr. Steele knows how important perfect vision is to succeed on the athletic field. For athletes, 2020 vision is not enough. Trustful Vision Care. Well, I, thought, I thought it was sharp, you know. Had a lot of penalties. I didn't like that. But the kids looked sharp, and the execution was mostly good. You know, uh, that no name, terrible, awful defense played okay. I was proud of it. Clay Chalkville jumped out to a 24-0 lead against Blackman High School in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and cruised to a 38-7 victory. Allen, Clay looks very tough. Well, they, they are. They're, they're, they're a good football team. They've won 16 straight games going back to last year. Uh, th this, is a, this is a good football team, and, and I, I think they're only going to get better as the season goes on. And this number just jumped out at me. Blackman ran 41 plays for 171 yards. And they only got five first downs. Clay ran 62 plays and gained 560 yards. And from what we saw, Blackman got 70 yards on one play late in the fourth quarter. That's pretty stout. It is. And, you know, Coach Hood, you know, talking to him in the preseason, his concern was the defense. Lost a lot of players on defense. He knew he had some talent coming back on offense. He was concerned about the defense. But I think they answered some of those concerns Friday night. The defense stepped up big. Take away that big play. I mean, they had they had about a hundred yards for for four and a half quarters. And I love the quote from Coach Hood that no name, terrible, awful defense played okay. So I was proud of him. Yeah, yeah. He he uh, he's too humble sometimes. That's not a that, that's a good bunch of guys, and they he he's got a good defense. Now on the offensive side, Ty Pigram again was on point, seventeen for twenty-seven for two ninety-seven, two touchdowns. Yeah, he's the real deal. Uh, 
I saw him this week. He's uh, he, he's a good looking athlete. Uh, he's a humble kid. He's he's a he's a coachable kid. Um, you know, I think Coach Hood's done a good job keeping him grounded, keeping him focused, and uh, look look for him to have a big big year. Uh, he, he may he may be the state of Alabama's Mr. Football this year. Brandon Barry uh, stepped in at running back and carried 11 times for 130 yards, two touchdowns. Um, that says a lot about Clay's offensive line. It is. They're they're good. They're big. Uh, uh, Brandon did a good job running the ball. Um, you, you know, we you knew Clay Chalkful could throw the ball. You knew with Pigram. You knew with the core receivers they had, they could throw the ball around. What what was the the you really didn't know was what kind of running game they would have, and that was answered with uh, Brandon Berry. Clay's on the road again next week. They travel up to take on Minor. Any thoughts on this one, Al? Well, you know, Minor is always scrappy. And when you go there, uh, you know, they're always tough. They're always physical. And, and it'll be a challenge. But, uh, again, they're going to they're have to be really, really good to play with this Clay Chalkwell team. When we come back, we're going to talk about Pinson Valley and their big victory against Hartzell. Gunner Roy would like to invite you to visit one of their three stores on Deerfoot Parkway. Both shell locations on Deerfoot offer delicious Hunt Brothers pizza, one at Highway 11 and the other at Old Springville Road, which was a BP and now has a fabulous new look customers need to see to believe. The Chevron at Happy Hollow Road features mouth-watering pop donuts that are delivered fresh each and every morning. A proud supporter of the community for more than 20 years, offering quality products at a fair price in a clean environment with friendly and efficient service, Gunner Oil. Respond, you know, um, I thought they responded well. I thought Jackie played really, really good as a quarterback. You can see his maturity level. O line did a hell of a job blocking, so um, really proud of them the way they block. Um, offense, you know, I think our offense is, is, is pretty potent. You know, we got some good receivers, you know, Jackie doing the right thing. So I, I was pleased, very pleased. So. Pinson Valley opened the 2015 season with a victory over Hartzell. Uh, a game that was tight for a little while, but Pinson opened it up in the fourth quarter, Alan. Yeah, and you know this Hartzell team is always real good, and 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 we talked in the in the preseason about this was a big game for both teams, uh, a big challenge to start the season, and uh, Pinson answered that challenge. They played a, they played a great game Friday night. Indians scored in all four quarters in this game. Uh, the sensational highlight by the the catch and the spin move by Tory Hendricks in this ball game. Uh, just take a look at this highlight. It's amazing. Takes a short pass from Jackie Matthews. Rolled off the defender. Looked like Michael Dyer in the 2011 National Championship game and goes 50 yards for the touchdown. That sealed the deal. Absolutely. And, you know, coaches teach running backs, don't stop. You know, don't stop till the whistle blows. Uh, Torrey Hendricks did that. Torrey Hendricks, good running back. And he's, you know, he's been patient the last few years. He's kind of played back up to Nick Gibson. And, uh, and so he's been patient, and he's getting his chance now to kind of show what he can do. And uh, Jackie Matthews had a strong night throwing the football. The sophomore completing 10 of 16 passes for 208 yards and two touchdowns. He looked good as well. He, he, he did. He's a good quarterback. He's young, and, you know, we forget sometimes he is a sophomore. Uh, but he played last year as a freshman. So he's got some experience, and uh, he's only going to get better and better as the season goes along, and he uh, – gains confidence, but a, a solid performance against a good Hartzell team. And one of the things Coach Glover was most pleased about was the way his defense played. They, they made some timely stops, had a goal line stand to close out the first half against Hartzell. So all of a sudden, Pinson Valley looking like a pretty strong club. Yeah, and again, I think for them that was the question, defense. Could, could the defense, could they put it together? And uh, they did against Hartzell. And I think if that defense continues to get better for Pinson, you're going to see Pinson make a run at this thing. Pinson travels to take on Aniana this week. Any thoughts on that one? Well, that's always a tough game. Aniana's a, a, a got a good program. I think they're a classification lower than Pinson, maybe two classifications lower than Pinson. But but Aniana always has a solid football team, well coached. Uh, uh, Don Jacobs, their coach up there, and he does a great job. Uh, uh, Pinson beat them pretty soundly last year, so Aniana may be looking for a little revenge. But uh, it'd be a tough game. But look, look for Pinson to continue to. Uh, to win, continue their winning streak. All right, when we come back, Coach Josh Floyd from the Hewitt Huskies stops by. We'll have that interview in just a moment.
Whether you're looking to buy your first home or you're trying to sell the one you're in now and need advice from a realtor, turn to Lee Marlowe, Realty South Realtor. Contact Lee today at 205-913-9559 or visit Lee at LeeMarlowHomes.com. Welcome back, and we're here with Hewitt Husky head coach Josh Floyd. Coach, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me on here. Um, before we get into the game, the game Friday night, I wanted to ask you a little bit about Alan Taylor and I are both big Auburn guys. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you about your relationship with Gus Malzahn, uh, the Auburn head coach, and, and what he means to you and how he shaped you as a person, not just a football coach. Sure. Uh, I actually talked to Coach Malzahn today. I mean, he, we do have a, a great relationship, and uh, it's obviously not – I don't talk to him every day or anything. I mean, we're, both of us are pretty – Pretty busy right now this time of year, so there's not a whole lot of time to chat. But uh, but we do try to keep in touch with each other. And uh, you know, Coach Malzahn was a huge, huge influence on my life. Uh, obviously, the football side. I mean, he taught me a lot about the game. And, and uh, you know, I was fortunate to be his first QB. It really started running the hurry up no huddle system, and so um, that's obviously grown and progressed a lot over the years. You know, some of the things are not much different than we used to do back back in the '90s, late late '90s. Uh, but but it's obviously grown over the years, and. and uh, so obviously the football side was a big part of me, but even off the field, I mean, just uh, the kind of person that he is. He, you know, he's a great Christian man, and uh, just just learned a lot from him about life. I mean, I still, I mean, honestly, I, I was asking about something uh, just today. It was pretty personal, just just some advice, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and, and I value what he says, and you know, because I know he's been he's he's been through a lot of things, and uh, you know, he's he's obviously the coach one of the biggest programs in America now so you know it, it's kind of interesting to see how that's all played out but uh, yeah c coach means a lot to me and uh, you know I, I owe him a lot for, for, for what we've been able to do in our in our career so is he still the same from being a high school coach to a big college coach is the same yeah, guy he's pretty much the same guy to me oh yeah I mean every time we get around it's always the same story so not, nothing changes well lost a tough game Friday night kind of a heartbreaker mm -hmm. against Montgomery Bell uh, your thoughts on how your team fared Friday night? Well, it, it was it was a heartbreaker. I, I hated it for our kids. We put so much time and effort, obviously, into this off season, and uh, and, and these guys have really you know built up a lot for, for this football game. Um, give Montgomery Bell Academy uh, credit. Very good football team, uh, and I think you saw that Friday night. You know they've got some some very good players physically and you know, a huge O line, so some really special talents on offense. But at the end of the day, they, they know how to win, and, and they're a very disciplined, well coached football team. And uh, you know I, I think that we. We just made too many mistakes, and it seemed like the mistakes we made were really, really big mistakes. And uh, we played really, really well in some areas. I thought our defense played played really well. Uh, you know, to contain that running back, you know, and he still had some yards. I know, but you're not you're not going to shut him down completely. I, I thought we did really well. I thought our D line played well. Um, offensively, I mean, if, if you know, stats obviously don't win or lose games, um, but but they do kind of tell how the game went. And and the stats that we had were kind of crazy on offense because we're rushing around 300 yards. And, you know, Zach, I think Zach completed 70-something percent of his passes. And I mean, that seems like a recipe for, you know, 30, 40 points. Um, you know, so they did a good job defensively, NBA did, of just stifling when we got inside the 20 and 30. They did a great job there. You know, we, we had a couple of special teams mishaps. And, uh, you know, that all that stuff together ended up costing us the game. So, you know, at the end of the day, I, I think we had a chance. We're driving down the field. We're at the – you know, we caught a pass about the 16, 17 yard line. We had about 45 seconds left and a chance to beat, you know, a Tennessee State champion that's, you know, nationally ranked. And so, you know, all those bad things considered, we had a chance there at the end. We just didn't quite get it done, but but I think we'll learn a lot from this game. You mentioned Zach Thomas and and his progress as a as a passer. Uh, how do you feel about his progress against after the Montgomery Bell game? Sure. I, well, I think you got to see a little bit of what, what Zach's going to be about this year. Um, I, we're just going to keep getting better and better at that throughout the season. Uh, there's nothing like live game reps. Um, but Zach was very accurate the other night, and I think he made some good reads. Um, I mean, we called a lot more passes that, that, than, you know, show up on the stat sheet. Um, and some of those just, they, you know, either got pressured or, you know, wasn't quite open. So I think you also got to see him make plays with his feet. But I think people are used to seeing that, uh, you know. But, but he did a great job uh, in, in the passing game, and uh, he, he's worked so hard on that. Um, it's never been a matter of arm strength or anything like that. I mean, Zach can make every throw that we need him to make. You know, he can make the 15-yard comeback deep out. He can, he can throw and he can throw the deep ball. He can do everything. It's just a matter of uh, him and the receivers getting on the same page and all those kind of things. And so uh, we've, we've come a long way. And that area, um, and, and we're still going to still have a way to go and keep building on that. Jerry and Street also had a very good night running the football. Um, 
How do you feel about how your offensive line played to block for him? You know, I think our offensive line had a good night. Um, it, there were definitely some things that, that we've got to do better on. Once again, we, we saw we saw a lot of mistakes that, that we made, um, and, and we, we we were able to already we've already gone over the game tape with the kids, and so um, I think we'll learn from that. Um, Jarian had a big game, you know, over 100 yards again, um, and you saw the kind of talent that Jarian is. I mean, he's just a big, tough kid. He, he's a load to bring down, and so um, he played really well. I, I felt like, and you know, we want to try to give him the ball more in the past game. Um, but we weren't, we didn't do that as well as I would have liked to um, the other night. But uh, you know, our offensive line, the, the three interior guys, our center and two guards. I mean, that was, that was the first time they'd ever played on Friday night football, and uh, you know, going against a pretty stinking good yeah. football team on the other side. So um, you know, when just those, there's a lot of guys in our. On, even though we do have some experience coming back, there was also, you know, there's half the guys on both sides of the ball really that that, that was their first Friday night competition. So. Um, offense and defense. And so I, I think it was great to throw those guys in the fire, and I think they responded well. Um, one thing I'd say is, and I told our team this the other day, we responded to adversity very well Friday night, and, and that wasn't the case last year. I remember last year, first game in Scar, I mean, every time something happened, we just went crazy on the sideline. I was just like, man, what is going on here? And, it, you know, and, and I think over the course of the year, we got better at it, but, but really, that, that was one thing, because we made some bad mistakes Friday night, but instead of it steamrolling we bounced back we had a little hey you know we suck it up and let's move on to the next play and, and i think that's a credit to our team and our senior leadership and, and those guys very good um you mentioned your defense anything you'd like to see them improve on from week one to week two well we obviously gave up some big plays um and, and that you know that really hurt us um uh, on that side of the ball and so um i think we they did drive the ball on us some but overall i felt like we we contained, once again, contained a running back that's really, really good, an offensive line that was, you know, 280 pounds across the board. And so um, we just have to, you know, be better with our eyes. You know, the, there were some, you know, we failed for some play action fakes. And, you know, unfortunately, that they got a few guys losing and got some guys open. And so um, just, uh, you know, even our secondary, I mean, that's four new starters back there right now. And, and those guys played well. It just, you know, there's those few plays on that, you know, we obviously like to have back. Um, but but that's, that's something I think we'll, We'll improve on throughout the year, but but I, th I think you saw a front seven too that has that does have some experience and it, it has seems to be pretty good this year. And you travel to Gardendale this week, um, a team that went deep into the 6A playoffs last year. A lot of returning starters. Uh, your thoughts on Gardendale? Yeah, Gardendale is a really good football team. Um, they, they, I think they've got a chance to do something really special again this year. They went to the I believe the quarterfinals of 6A last year, and uh, I, I watched them as this year went on. I think they were similar to us last year. They just got better and better and better throughout the season and they ended up making making a pretty deep run. Uh, they returned their quarterback from last year. Um, the running back's coming back. He had about, I think he had eight or 900 yards last year. Um, they have some linemen back, um, have, have some big linemen there. Um, defensively, I, I think they're gonna be really good again. Uh, they have some really, really good linebackers that played for them last year. A couple guys on the D-line that are back. And so um, you're talking about a pretty experienced group um, with Gardendale. And so um, I, I know they're gonna be ready to play. Um, you know, we've got them move on, learn from this, and, and try to go be Gardendale now. And that was another thing I told the kids, we can't lose two, can't lose twice. You know, you, you, just, you lose once, lose once, and, and let's bounce back. And so I, I know our guys will be ready. Very good. That game's at 7 o'clock up in Gardendale. When we return, we'll have the Players of the Week. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, man. Paul Davis Emergency Services of Northeast Birmingham helps by providing needed cleanup and restoration services. Through the appropriate tools and processes, we avoid wasting valuable time to get your property to its previous state as quickly as we possibly can. Through our experience with restoration services in Birmingham, we can determine the necessary services depending on your property and type of damage, which may include smoke and fire damage restoration, water damage restoration, wind damage restoration, and mold removal. Paul Davis, recover, reconstruct, restore. 205-687-0556. All right, we're gonna send it over to Brandon Dawkins for your game day forecast. Thanks guys. Well, the forecast for this Friday night's kickoff looks great. Hewitt will be at Gardendale and Clay Chalkville will be at Minor, so everyone can expect temperatures to be in the upper 70s at 7 o'clock. Pinson will travel to Aniana, where the temperatures will also be in the upper 70s. The low that night should be about 63. Hope everybody has a great game. In the Trustful Gas and Water Weather Center, I'm Brandon Dawkins. 
And now it's time for Tribune Sports Live Student Athletes of the Week. This week, we start with Clay Chalkville Senior Wide Receiver T.J. Simmons. He's our Week 1 Player of the Week. He caught four passes for 151 yards, which is almost 38 yards per run, and a pair of touchdowns. He also served as a dominant blocker in the run game and on bubble screens. Our next student athlete is Pinson Valley's very own Tory Hendricks. Hendricks had 18 carries for 82 yards and a touchdown. He also had two catches for 68 yards, including a critical 61-yard touchdown catch in the fourth quarter. And now, our final player of the week hails from Hewitt Trussville. Number five, Jerrion Street, with 24 carries, 143 yards, and a touchdown. This has been Tribune Sports Live, Player of the Week, brought to you by Gunter Oil. At Bryant Bank, we focus on you. You'll never have to worry about being just another number in the system. When you're a member of the Bryant Bank family, our Bryant Bankers will work to understand who you are, where you want to go, and how we can help you to get there. We're big believers in developing relationships with our customers, and we value friendships we make along the way. Bryant Bank provides unbeatable service and legendary results. Bryant Bank, member FDIC, and equal housing lender. All right, we're back, and it's prediction time. Alan, we'll start with Pinson. They, they take on Aniana, a team they handled pretty easily last year, a 4A opponent. Well, Aniana is always a good team. They are 4A, but they always have a solid football team. But after watching this Pinson team this week, I think Pinson will take care of business with Aniana this week. I'll agree on that one. All right, Clay Chalkville travels up to Minor to take on the Purple Tigers. Your thoughts? Well, again, mine are always a, a, a solid team. Um, I, I'm not sure at this point I wouldn't take Clay Chalkville over the Green Bay Packers, so I'm going to go with Clay Chalkville again on this one. Yeah, Clay Chalkville big as, as far as I'm concerned as well. All right, the Hewitt Huskies also on the road this week. They travel up to Gardendale, a team that went deep into the 6A playoffs last year. Your thoughts on that one? Well, as you heard Coach say, they're a, a, a solid team. They're, they're probably a little better than they were last year. We got behind with them last year. But uh, And it's going to be tough for the coach to get the players up after a heartbreaking loss. Uh, but I see Tua Trussell rebounding this week. We'll go to Gardendale, and I think we'll take care of business. Well, that's all the time on our show. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. We'll be back next week with more highlights. For Alan Taylor, I'm Zach Steele. Good night, everyone.